I just got back from holiday and it was lovely, thank you for asking. And the car that we had out there was a subcompact crossover SUV. And while there are a million different categories of SUVs, it inspired me to make this video on a bunch of very fast, cheap, well, I say cheap, depreciated luxury SUVs. All 10 of these SUVs have unbelievable performance and a great level of luxury for under 50,000 pounds, which is a lot of money, by the way, but relative to their performance, pretty insane. So let's get straight into it. If you wanna see more videos like this at a lower price range, then hit the like button, a thousand likes, and I'll make the same video again at maybe, let's say, 20K instead. Subscribe as well if you're new here. Without further ado, let's get straight into it. <laughs> We're kicking off with the absolute monster that is the Jeep Grand Cherokee SRT, which is blessed with a Hemi 6.4 litre V8 engine that produces 461 brake horsepower, taking it to 60 in 4.8 seconds. So the Trackhawk is the highest performance model and the SRT is a step down from that which arrived earlier in the Grand Cherokee's lifespan. SRT stands for Street and Racing Technology and has been responsible for a bunch of sick cars like the Dodge Viper and it's that formula that's been smashed into this 4x4, hence it looks beefier with the liberal use of carbon fiber on the interior too. It's effectively an SUV muscle car and given it's quite a rare car in the UK, I rate it highly. These start at around £27,000 with £50,000 getting you a 2017 model with around 30,000 miles on the clock, not bad at all. Lift to failure is the main known issue for examples between 20k and 100k miles but generally they're pretty reliable. Next up we have the newest car on the list and an engine that is less than half the size of that Hemi. It's the VW Tiguan R which comes with a 2 litre turbocharged inline 4 which reduces 300 15 brake horsepower, taking it to 60 in 4.7 seconds. The Tiguan R arrived with the second generation car's facelift and it follows much of the formula that you'd expect from anything else in the R lineup. That engine is literally directly shared with the Mach 8 Golf R for example, as is the launch blue colour known on VW R's. Its lower suspension can be more or less twitchy depending on whether you've put it in race mode and it gets 21 inch alloys, larger upgraded brakes and sounds good thanks to that Akrapovich exhaust and the interior is pretty sick too for an SUV. As it's so new, they start at around £40,000 secondhand today, and 50k will easily get you into a 2022 model with less than 5k on the clock. On reliability, as it's so new, there's not much to report, but I'd want to look after that auto box for the longer term. Sticking with the VW Group, let's talk about the Audi SQ7, which matches the Tig 1 to 60 despite its size, thanks to its 4 litre twin turbo diesel V8 engine, which makes 428 brake horsepower. This came with the second generation Q7, and anything with an S badge when it comes to Audi normally means it's a good mix of performance performance and comfort, which in the SQ7's case is definitely true. It's got a massive cabin to give maximum comfort for all occupants, with seats focused more on luxury than many of the other SUVs on this list. The exterior is similarly not hugely aggressive, it's simply a slightly more angular Q7. It's also got some great advancements in it too, like an electric compressor and two EGR systems, making it a bit of a technical masterpiece. That mixture of power, road holding, size and practicality makes it maybe a more boring choice on this list, but a hard one to beat. Those six pounds will get you into one of these and 50k will get you a 2018 example with around 40,000 miles on it. It's actually got a generally solid reliability record too but split CV boots and coil pack failures are known. In the UK one of the most obvious examples of a luxury super SUV is this, the Range Rover Sport SVR which shares its bonkers engine with the Jaguar F-Type SVR, a 5 litre supercharged V8 which makes 542 brake horsepower taking it to 60 in 4.5 seconds. SVR or special vehicle racing is like a Jaguar Land Rover equivalent of SRT from that Jeep I mentioned earlier, so there are some similarities in terms of concept, but as I've spoken about this car in a video not too long ago, I want to focus on something in particular, the sound. These things sound like thunder, particularly with the right exhaust to enhance the burbles. JLR have come to pride themselves on making the nicest noises available recently, and it's hard to argue against the monstrous sound of one of these. These live from around the £35,000 mark, and for 50 k you'll get a 2017 model with around 50,000 miles on the clock. It's actually a surprisingly good car from a reliability perspective but it is also very expensive to run. The Porsche Cayenne Turbo S always surprised me with just how rapid it is and I suppose having driven a 911 Turbo S it really shouldn't given the concept is similar. Create a car that works as a daily driver but is absolutely monstrously rapid at the same time. That performance comes from a 4.8 litre twin turbocharged V8 which makes 542 brake horsepower taking it to 60 in 4.4 seconds. The Turbo S is actually still surprisingly good off-road despite it being lower 
were. Unlike with many modern SUVs, Porsche genuinely wanted to make a car that maintained some level of 4x4 prowess. And it does that while still giving you a luxurious space to be. I love the interiors on KNs in particular, as some of the specs are super cool. £24,000 is the minimum you'll find these listed for, which places it at the cheaper end of this video, and £50,000 will get you a 2017 model with 50,000 miles on it. Plastic coolant lines are known to cause some issues, and very typically, coil or spark plug failure is known too. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you are, remember to hit the like button, a thousand likes with the same video in under £20,000, and maybe we can get even lower in the future. And I'm not a huge SUV fan, but maybe you are. And if you are, can you let me know in the comments down below what your favourite category of SUV is? There's like millions of different categories. Let me know what your favourite SUV category is in the comments down below. We just spoke about that Range Rover Sports SVR, and let's keep that SVR badge going with the Jaguar F-Pace, which shares that 5 liter supercharged V8, putting out 542 brake horsepower, taking it to 60 slightly quicker at 4.1 seconds. Despite having such similar stats to the Range Rover Sport, the actual F-Pace is more closely related to the Range Rover Velar, as it shares its platform with that range. It was designed by the legendary Ian Callum and has a top speed of almost 180 miles per hour, but what's really interesting is that despite Jaguar making their mark in the electrified space with the I-Pace, they didn't fancy adding any hybridization to this beast for any more power. £44,000 will get you into one of these, making it the second most expensive car on the list, but £50,000 will still get you a 2019 model with less than 20,000 miles on it. And on reliability, as they are relatively new, there's not much to speak about. JLR haven't had an amazing record recently though, which is worthy of note. Just missing out on the top three, we have the BMW X6 M with its pretty aggressive 4.4 litre twin turbocharged V8 engine making 566 brake horsepower, which gets to 60 in 4.1 seconds matching the F-Pace. It's heavily related to the X5 M and on release was one of the quickest cars to 60 in the mid-size luxury crossover SUV class. It was even released at the LaSalle circuit in Qatar to prove this performance point. It doesn't look insanely different to the standard X6 and I think the look of the car overall is a bit Marmite. Some people love sloping roof lines on SUVs, others don't. Let me know your thoughts in the comments down below. It does have a nice interior though, even if headroom is more limited than in the X5 in the rear. The car that helped to make designer famous can be found for as low as £23,000, making it the cheapest car on the list, and £50,000 will easily get you into a 2018 model with less than 30,000 miles on it. There are some build quality issues with the X6s to look out for, and excess oil consumption can rear its ugly head. On to our last German car of the video now, the Mercedes GLC 63 AMG, which is a beast of a car, with its 4 litre twin turbocharged V8 engine producing 502 brake horsepower, taking it to 60 in 3.7 seconds. The GLC class took over from the GLK class, similar to the SLK and SLC classes of the sports cars. In this case, the C signifies that this is the SUV equivalent of the popular Mercedes C class, and as a result, it sits in the compact SUV class. Like the SVRs, it sounds incredible, and it's known by owners and reviewers to have really positive dynamics, in part because of its C-Class origins, although it's not the class leader in this space. And it also has really good luxury, and again, it's not the class leader, but all in it offers a really good overall package compared to its competitors. £41,000 is the lowest that I could find these listed for, and £50,000 will get you a 2018 model with around 40,000 miles on it. There have been some complaints about poor interior build quality and some transmission problems as well. If you watch the channel, you'll know I absolutely love an Alfa Romeo, and though I'm not really an SUV, fan, the Stelvio Quadrifoglio is a pretty good looking example, with its 2.9 litre twin turbocharged V6 engine absolutely shaming a bunch of the V8s on this list, putting out 502 brake horsepower and managing not to 60 in 3.7 seconds matching the Merc. Like the GLC, it sits on its saloon variants platform, the Julia, and as a result, it's known to have some of the best handling in its class. It proved this at the Nürburgring, managing a mental time of 7 minutes and 51 seconds, the fastest of any production SUV, faster than the Gallardo, V12 Vantage S, M4, and even the SLR McLaren, so nothing to be sniffed at. It's cheaper on the interior and less luxurious overall, but indisputably performant. £39,000 will get you into one of these, and for £50,000 you'll be looking at a 2020 model with around 20,000 miles on the clock. A leaky coolant hose and adaptive cruise control failure are both known problems on these. Taking the top spot thanks to its unbelievable 0 to 60 time is the Tesla Model X P100D Ludicrous Edition, which of course is a dual motor electric 
vehicle, putting out 602 brake horsepower, which you get to 60 in 2.9 seconds. Genuinely unbelievable pace. As I mentioned before, I drove the 992 Turbo S in anger and did some launches in that, and this Model X is incredibly close in pace to that, which boggles the mind. Not only is this car rapid, it does have some pretty cool features like the Falcon Wing double hinged doors and the individual bucket seats for each passenger. But that performance is terrifying, even if it does mean that owners generally haven't seen these cars managing their full range, typically getting maybe 70% out of them on long journeys. These start at around the £48,000 mark though, making it the most expensive car on the list, and 50k will get a 2017 model with around 46,000 miles on it. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Again, I want to say a massive thank you for bearing with me. I didn't put out a Tuesday video this week, and that's all because I was on holiday. I tried to make that video, I ran out of time, and then I just decided to cancel it and just focus on having a good holiday and coming back and feeling refreshed. As many of you know, YouTube is a hobby for me. I do it on the side alongside a full-time career. So yeah, I just knew I had to put everything to one side for a moment, have my holiday and come back feeling good. Anyway, huge thanks to the patrons for their support and to you guys as well for watching. And if you wanna watch another video on some cool SUVs, then click up here and subscribe down here.